going to look the other way, but, uh, well, she really looked interested in Tiz, too, so, but, uh, she asked Jax about the tiny pot they have to do with her death. Jax was like, I don't know why the Chinese would have a problem with me. I like the Chinese. I like their food, which is kind of funny. And then, uh, then we get to the warehouse scene, which I've already brought up a couple times, where they, you know, take out the rebellious one-niner. First, he talks to the guy and suckers him and making him think he's going to help them over, help him overthrow the other guy. And, uh, they kill him. Then right after that, he gets a call from Gemma because of an incident where... Nero beat the crap out of one of the girls that works there's dad because of him hitting Gemma and hitting the girl. Because uh, Nero doesn't like women getting beat on. Yeah. But, uh, and he's like, you know, all cool and calm down. He's like, hey, mom, what's up? Uh, I just thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> he just plays it off like, hey, mom, what's up? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the episode ends with, uh, you know, Tibbs, well, also we get an interaction with Tibbs and Deuce, Deuce, you know, and Wunsworth, you know, get Deuce, or get Tibbs there, Wunsworth tells him that, you know, Deuce and Wunsworth say that, uh, Deuce held him at gunpoint, that's why he called to have Tibbs come there, and he's talking to Tibbs about trying to get back in the club, and Tibbs says, you know what, you can take that gun, put it in your mouth, and pull the trigger, because, yeah, you know, because he betrayed the club and numerous times already, so, and Tibbs has really been loyal to the club the whole time, whether it be Jack or Clay running the thing, he's always been loyal, he's been the, you know, good soldier and all that, and, uh, then Deuce tells him, you know, he loves him and all that stuff, and he calls him brother and says, this is all I know and this and that, well, you shouldn't have betrayed him then, but, uh, then we get to where Tibbs goes to pay the sheriff, and, you know, they make a little deal, and uh, he's checking her out, and she's checking him out while they were, you know, making this deal, so somewhere down the line, them two are possibly going to hook up, you know, Tibbs, you know, hasn't had a woman since his wife died when the, uh, the Irish prick that they, he was working for that had, which they took care of at the end of season two. Also, Agent Skull, too, but, uh, yeah, but overall, the episode was a good episode, and, you know, it ends with Jack beating up the girl's dad that works for Nero and them, and, uh, so, overall, it's been a good episode, these last two, these last three episodes have been good, and if this is a glimpse of what season seven's gonna be, well, the final ride's gonna be, then, you know, it's gonna be a great epic finale, and I can't wait. I mean, I don't want to, I kind of can't wait to see the finale, but then I'm going to be upset because this is going to be the last season of Sons, and, you know, FX don't really have a show really slated that can take the place of Sons very much, and maybe they will down the road, but, yeah, that'll do it for this review. Overall, I'm going to give this episode a five, a five out of five, some hilarious moments, some intense moments, some very brutal moments, you know, everything about it, everything you love about Sons very much, but, Tune in tomorrow for when I will talk about the crimes at the end of, well, no. I'll be doing, uh, predictions. Thursday I'll be talking about the crimes at the NFL. But, uh, until then, catch you guys later. Peace out.